Hi guys and welcome back to Sticky Mess 17. My name is Yvonne and my channel is all about cleaning information, inspiration and motivation as well as voucher codes too. So check out my website, any links for any products that I've got in my house and that I recommend will be linked in the description box below as well as on my website stickymess17.co.uk. So make sure you subscribe if you're new, hit the like button for more content on a Wednesday and Sunday at 10 a.m. And with all that said, in today's video is a bit of a random one so it's the odd stuff so the first thing I need to do is strip the bed I'm going to wash the beds today um, sort out and then just do a few other odd jobs that we may have forgotten about around the house but that definitely need doing make sure you keep watching because I've got a chewing gum hack for dried in chewing gum I'm going to be cleaning under my sink doing some laundry and my zip on my nursing pillow that has been gone for about four months now. I've finally got around to fixing it and I'm going to show you a really easy way if it's just the pulley bit on the zip that's broken and not the actual mechanism. So keep watching and I'll show you how to do that. Let's get in with it. I change beds religiously on a Sunday. I feel awkward if I do it on any other day of the week. If we're going away for the weekend, I try and do it before we leave so we can, don't have to worry about uh, trying to make a bed when we get home. I've just realized here that my zip is still broken and I've lost the paper clip in it, hence the reason I'm going to be fixing it in a minute. But getting back to the common question, how many times a week do you change your bed? Some people do it every day. Some people do it once a month. Let me know in the comments. I will also have the sheet suspenders that stop the sheets moving off the corners of the bed. I'll have them linked in the description box down below as well as on my website, so check it out. Right, now I'm going to fix my zip. Now it's just this pulley bit that I've um, lost. So I'm going to, I've taken an old zip that I'm not using and I've broken the bit in between with some plies. I've just cut it in half. I'm going to put it in the one side of the zip, making sure that I get it underneath the little catch that locks the zip and then just pinch it shut. Yes, it's not the prettiest zip, but to be honest, I can't be bothered changing a whole zip just for my pillowcase. <laughs> really lazy, I know, but this was a quick fix and it stayed on and it's working a treat. And I've obviously caught the little locky bit inside the zip. Excuse the terminology, but it's working now. Now I'm going to move on to the playroom. Who has the most fascinating time or enjoyable time rather of breaking up Lego? I absolutely love it. I prefer breaking up Lego than building it. So weird. So I'm going to tidy that up and then move on to the next job.
this is dried chewing gum. I'm not sure how long it's been in there, but in that uh, tub there, I have only got vinegar and water and a toothbrush. Now I've obviously sped this up and I keep dipping the toothbrush into the vinegar solution, but it only took three minutes to scrub this out of a seat. I don't know how long the chewing gum has been there, but it's had plenty of bums, you know, time to dry and sat on a lot of times. And to be honest, three minutes it took to get it up vinegar and water and that was it and a toothbrush so obviously it's sped up so that you're not having to sit through three minutes of scrubbing but this is a seat and yeah it came up a treat so use vinegar to remove old chewing gum even if it's on your clothes it will work absolutely fine and not damage the fabric <music> My light laundry has just come out the dryer now. The weather hasn't been the prettiest outside, so no drying out at the moment. But as a rule of thumb, I do one load a day and put it away. And using those folding baskets means it's a full load in the washing machine and it's just so quick to fold it and put it away. The light loads tend to be more my daughter's clothes, but yeah, one load a day and put it away. And now onto the oven. My oven ha is a bit hot, that's why I'm just touching the trays and it's still a little bit warm, but we've had pasta bake for lunch. So I'm just gonna take that out. By the time I put soap on it, it's gonna be cool enough to touch. I'm taking out the racks out of my oven. I'm going to scrub them down. I'm using my e-cloth scrub pad with washing up liquid. Nothing else at this point, but I did move on to using something a bit more abrasive, which I used the barkeeper's friend and there was little or no scrubbing. It came off like jelly off a plate so it was really good um, it's now cold enough to touch i'm scrubbing it down so easy keep on top of your oven even if you give it a wipe down once a month depending how messy your food or your cooking is and just keep it on top of it that way it will be so much easier to clean when you have to do a deep clean Now I'm going over the oven with the leftover soap and barkeeper's frame that was left on my scrub pad, a clean um, e-cloth kitchen cloth, and I'm just wiping that down in sections and cleaning the cloth in between each section. So sidewall, back, sidewall, bottom, and glass door. You'll see when I go back to the glass door in a minute, I'll buff it up, but there's still a little bit of marks on there, so I'll use my glass scraper, link below. 
and just make sure that there's no other bits on there and then wipe it down again and buff it up nice with my e-cloth polishing cloth put everything back and it looks amazing <laughs> Now I'm moving on to my under sink cupboard. Now I'll be honest, I haven't tidied this up since well before we did the kitchen, probably May of 18, because it's just a cupboard I forget about. I, we don't really use it. I try and keep chemicals out of the way of my daughter. So we don't really use it. We only really store our food bin in there and tea towels, that's about kitchen towels rather. But there is chemicals in there now. She's a bit older. She's never, ever gone into the cupboard. We've only just recently taken off the child lock off the cupboard. Um, but everything has got child proof locks on them anyway, like the Mock J's fluid. And it's just basically dog shampoo and shoe polish really in there. But I did find fairy liquid, which I've just rebought and <laughs> to find one in the cupboard already. And hand soap, I can oh anyway this is the state of my cupboard inside as you can see this is about two years worth of gunk i'm going to use a flash spray and my bathroom e-cloth an old one that i don't mind if i wreck and i'm just going to spray it down how on earth did everything from the floor fit in that cupboard <laughs> uh, and give it a wipe down and then restock it and i'll show you a before and after in a minute <laughs> really enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a like check out my website stickymess17.co.uk subscribe if you're new and i will see you in the next one if you haven't seen any of my other videos i'll link them on the side here for you take care see you in the next one bye